Hola, Jessica here. I'm gonna show you how to make these cooling wraps for the summer. The reason I'm making these cooling wraps is we're gonna end up in Texas in July, so I'm just trying to prepare to battle the heat for my family. So I'm making a few of them so that we can have one on and one cooling and we can just switch them out. These were definitely a weapon in my mother's arsenal when I was younger. It's not a new idea, but I wanted to show you how I made mine and hopefully it'll help you to beat the heat this summer. All right, so you technically only need an eighth of a yard to create one of these wraps. An eighth of a yard is gonna be four and a half inches and you can just use the width of the fabric. So this one was a 35 inch, it's just like a cotton. So you wanna sew a tube. You wanna leave a three inch opening. So as you have right sides together, you're going to lock your stitch at the beginning sew some ways down and then lock your stitch again and then you're going to pull your fabric so that you have a three inch opening and that's not been sewn then you're going to lock your stitch again and then sew all the way down the tube and all I did was just line my presser foot up with the edge of the fabric and then I locked my stitch at the end. Here is your three inch opening. If you have pinking shears, then go ahead and cut off the excess seam allowance with pinking shears, and that'll just prevent the fabric from continuing to fray. If you don't, don't worry about it. So now I'm lining up the seam I just created with the center line on the opposite end of the fabric, and I am gonna press open the seam with my fingers just so that it'll lay better, and I'm going to taper off so that it is not just a square as you're wearing it, it looks better when it's tapered off. And just to give you a visual of this cut, you do need to line up that seam with the center of the opposite end because this is what the cut looks like when it's not sewn and that's hard to mimic without folding it correctly. Repeat for the other side. Then I laid flat, pressed the seams open and ironed. So now using my scissors, I'm gonna turn the entire tube right sides out and through that three inch opening hole. After I turned it right sides out, I put my scissors back in through the three inch opening hole and went all the way to the other end so that I could poke out the corners so that they look sharper. And yes, I gave it another press right sides out. Now I just found the center by folding it in half and marking the center. From my center point, I went out 11 inches in each direction and marked. And don't forget to use coordinating thread. Starting from the 11 inch mark that is farthest away from your three inch opening, you have to keep track of that three inch opening, the farthest 11 mark, you're gonna sew a line perpendicular from that tube. Now turning your tube lengthwise, you're gonna sew a line parallel, starting from that 11 inch mark farthest away from the three inch opening that you just sewed closed. Just past that, you're gonna sew all the way down to the other end, down the center, to the 11 inch mark on the opposite end that's closest to the three inch opening. And that's gonna create two channels in the center of this tube. There are a variety of products that you can use. I just used this one. I did use a quarter teaspoon and you know that was kind of much. You probably could have used a eighth of a teaspoon and been fine. So don't overdo it. It doesn't seem like much going in when the little granulates are dry but trust me they will fill up and probably with a quarter teaspoon filled up a little bit too much but it still did the job. So using gravity, I put the quarter teaspoon in and then just worked the granulates on one side. There's two channels now, so you sew down the center, there's two channels, and I'm just sticking to the right side, and I move them all the way down, so they're all the way out of the way. Then I put another quarter teaspoon in, and I worked it down the left side of the channels. So you don't want to mix them because it's going to be too much on one side and you just want to work it all the way down so that it's out of your way because you still need to sew. With these granulates out of your way, you're going to find your center 
line that you marked and you're going to sew a perpendicular line so that it'll enclose those granulates into those two channels and not be able to escape. Then add another quarter teaspoon through that three inch opening onto the right side or the left side, whichever side, one side only, in that channel. Push it all the way down so that now it's touching the center line that you just sewed. Repeat again, adding a quarter teaspoon. Work on the opposite end. So if you did the right side, now you're doing the left side. And there's four channels. And then move them all the way down because we still need to sew again. With the granules out of your way and touching the center line, you're going to sew a perpendicular line on the 11 inch opening that is closest to your 3 inch opening. And this is going to enclose that last two channels and those granules aren't going to be able to escape at all. So now you just have to sew the opening closed. You can slip stitch this. That would be perfectly fine. Um, or if you just want to be like me and do it quickly, you want to spread the back apart because you don't want it being sewn into the seam. Tuck your raw edges in, line up your edge, and then just sew as close to that edge as possible, closing it, locking your stitch at the beginning and end, and then you just clip your threads and you're done. Just put this in a bowl of water in the refrigerator for about an hour and they will completely fill up and be ready to use. Vuelta. <laughs> that was it it's pretty easy let me know if you gave it a try and please thumb it sub it speak it, and spread it god bless bye bye